What if I told you the Titanic never sank? What? So the owner of the boat, JP Morgan, actually had two boats. He had the Titanic and he had the Olympic. And the Olympic was a little bit older and a little bit more run down. And it was also in some accidents. Okay. So the theory is that JP Morgan sank the boat on purpose because he knew he would get a lot of money. What? He did it for the insurance money, right? But why sink the newly built Titanic when you could scratch off the paint, swap the names, and sink the Olympic instead? He just painted the word Titanic over the Olympic? It gets worse. Guess who was on that boat? Who? I know there's a lot of people on the boat. All of JP Morgan's business competitors. What? And not one of them made it out. Oh my god. But guess who wasn't on the boat? Who? JP Morgan. Was he supposed to be? He canceled minutes before it left. Because he knew it was going to sink. And there was a guy named James Fenton, right, who survived and worked on the boat. And on his deathbed, his last words were, the Titanic never sank. It was the Olympic. Wait, what? And he said that if he said anything, something bad would happen to him. So what you're trying to say is the movie Titanic is actually called the Olympic. Exactly. Scary Disney movie theories. Let's take a look at Finding Nemo. Theory goes that Nemo is actually dead. Sadly, he didn't survive the attack at the beginning of the film. The whole movie is actually about a father trying to come to terms with the death of his wife and kids. As a result, Nemo is a figment of Marlin's imagination. The whole movie is Marlin searching for his son that doesn't exist. He invented Nemo as a coping mechanism. In fact, Nemo in Latin means nobody or nothing. So the title of the movie translates to Finding Nobody. That's because Nemo isn't real. Like and follow for more content like this. This theory on Marvel's Eternals will shock you. So the biggest question everyone's been asking is that if the Eternals are a group of immortal superheroes, where have they been this entire time? And this theory explains that. So this is Sprite, the youngest member of the team, and she has the ability to create illusions and manipulate reality. My theory is that something happens and the Eternals agree to go into hiding, so Sprite wipes everyone's memory and they all go and lead normal lives. That's why we see them in regular clothes, living regular lives around the world. However, because of the snaps between Infinity War and Endgame, so much cosmic energy was generated that it broke the enchantment. So now the Eternals are remembering their past lives as superheroes, and because the Avengers aren't really around anymore, they're going to rise to the occasion to protect Earth. Crazy movie fan theories that are probably real, part 3. The Joker may be one of the most notable villains in all of movie history. And he's also one of the most mysterious as not many people know his real background. Well, one fan theory might explain the Joker's very mysterious background. This fan theory suggests that the Joker was an ex-military intelligence officer. So let's break down the minute details you might have missed. The most obvious one, the Joker knew the proper burial movements for the military when disguised as a military officer. He even alludes to war in the Middle East. And not only that, but every single time he gets interrogated by Batman or anybody else, he is completely unfazed every time. Like he was trained to handle it. Crazy movie fan theories that are probably real, part two. The Wizard of Oz is one of the most popular movies of all time, and to this day is still liked by many people. And for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward movie, except for the fact that Dorothy has a little secret that not many people know. Dorothy's time in Oz wasn't actually a dream, but an alternate reality. Why you may ask? Well, every major character that Dorothy meets in Oz has a counterpart in Kansas. And Dorothy herself also has a parallel counterpart in this alternate reality. And it's none other than the Wicked Witch of the East. Just think about it for a second, we never get to see the face of the Wicked Witch of the East. And Dorothy wears the same shoe size as the Wicked Witch of the East. Coincidence? I think not. Dark Disney theories too real to ignore, part two. For this one, let's take a look at Monsters, Inc. Theory goes that Sully is now dead. So in Monsters, Inc., Randall always mentions how bad humans are. At one point, he says that humans skin monsters and make toilet seat covers out of their fur. Sadly, this foreshadowed the fate of our friend Sully. In a Toy Story short, there's a scene where a kid is taking a bubble bath. And lo and behold, on the toilet seat in the bathroom is a fuzzy Sully seat cover. So Randall was right. Humans do skin the monsters and turn them into toilet seat covers. Poor Sully. Like and follow for more videos like this.
These are some crazy fan theories about your favorite movies that might make you see them completely different. Part 1. You remember the movie Home Alone where one kid set a bunch of elaborate traps for some of his home invaders that made for one great slapstick comedy? What do you think happened to him once he grew up? Because one fan theory has him doing something completely insane. Now to be able to pull off the pranks and tricks that this kid did, you gotta be built a little bit different. So what if when he grows up, he becomes a serial killer and that serial killer is none other than Jigsaw from the Saw movies who sets elaborate traps and games just with a little bit more of a deadly ending. I mean, come on, this makes a lot of sense. The Home Alone kid ends up becoming a serial killer. If you like this fan theory, hit that like and follow button and wait for part two. TV show fan theories. Curious George only liked him because he looked like a banana. Honestly, I 100% believe it. He's a monkey. He's wearing yellow with a hat that looks like a banana. Riverdale doesn't exist. It's just Jughead writing a story. Honestly, the first two seasons were good. Then it just kind of went whoop downhill. This would kind of make sense on how all these things just started happening after season two. In Mean Girls, Regina George did die, but Caddy acts like she didn't out of guilt. That's why Regina was wherever Caddy went, and no one clapped when she catches her pe piece of tiara. At the end of Wally, -E, the globe looks very different. It could be to show the soon effects of global warming. Global warming is real, and this is gonna happen to us one day. If we don't do something about it. Jack from Titanic was a time traveler. Okay, this one that just doesn't make sense, I'm sorry. Moana actually died in the thunderstorm. It could explain why she only meets gods and mystical creatures for the rest of the film. Oh damn. So we all know Nuka from Lion King too. But I have a theory about this scrawny fella. See, Nuka's mane doesn't fit with the type of small-maned lions. As small-maned lions will still have a substantial amount of hair growing entirely around the head. Nuka's mane is closer to that of an adolescent. But by the time Kovu's already grown up, Nuka's mane hasn't changed at all. Meaning that this is as full as his mane is going to get. However, there is something very familiar about his mane. Lionesses have been known to spontaneously grow manes or patches of manes. And in fact, like this one here, can sometimes grow full manes. When this happens, they'll often begin acting like male lions. On top of that, even with as skinny as he is, you can tell he does not have the standard lion shape. As comparing him to Kovu or Simba, his hips drop down more, which is much closer to a lioness in nature. Even art of a healthy Nuka has this drop. So Nuka might be intersex or maned lioness as he displays the physical characteristics of both. In the 2014 Marvel film Guardians of the Galaxy, fans met Drax the Destroyer, an alien being obsessed with killing Ronan the Accuser. Drax was played by WWE legend Dave Bautista. During the film, Rocket makes a statement to Quill that all metaphors would go over Drax's head. Drax responds to this accusation by declaring that due to his quick reflexes, nothing would ever go over his head and that he would catch it. What fans have been confused about during this scene is that clearly Rocket saying things would go over Drax's head is just a turn of phrase and isn't referring to an actual object going over Drax's head. Some have even theorized that Drax was taking Rocket's statement literally when it was clearly meant to be metaphorical. An even crazier theory suggests that Drax actually knew what Rocket was saying but for some reason impulsively still felt the need to provide commentary on the statement. And whether or not the Drax over my head debacle is ever figured out remains to be seen. In the most recent season of The Mandalorian, we learned that Cara Dune was from Alderaan, the planet blown up by Darth Vader and Tarkin in the first Star Wars movie. We also know that Alderaan is the home planet of one Princess Leia. In the 1983 film Return of the Jedi, there is a scene where Luke asks Leia if she remembers her mother. During this scene, Leia confesses to Luke that she does have vague memories of her mother and remembers her being beautiful. In putting these pieces together, some fans have begun to theorize that the beautiful woman from Alderaan who Leia is actually referencing is, you guessed it, Cara Dune, the star of The Mandalorian. Another clue to this mystery is the small tattoo under the eye of Cara Dune. Just under Cara Dune's eye is a portrait of Wicket, the beautiful Ewok that befriended Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi. The theory suggests that the tattoo of Wicket is a tribute to her daughter, Princess Leia. There's something really significant in the Jingle Bell Rock scene from Mean Girls. In an earlier scene in the movie, Katie says this. I have to go to Regina's to practice for the talent show. We're doing a dance to this song. Jingle Bell Rock. I interpret this moment as Katie doesn't know what Jingle Bell Rock even is. But of course, when things go wrong at the talent show, Katie saves the day by starting to sing the song. 
She goes from not knowing this classic American song to singing it entirely by memory. I think this is a really subtle change that reflects Katie's assimilation into American high school culture. Throughout the whole movie, there's this juxtaposition between Katie's old life in Africa and her new life in the United States. I think it's reflected also in this scene where Aaron finds a picture of Katie in Africa hidden behind a picture of Katie with the plastics. The more Americanized Katie becomes, the more she hides her authentic self and who she was in Africa. Tell me about your grim alternate reading of a popular children's movie or TV show. Mine is Madagascar. I have a lot of concerns about where the lemurs in that film got their accents. Hear me out. All the non-lemur animals in the movie speak with the accent of the country from which they came. However, the lemurs are all over the damn place. King Julian is based on Sasha Baron Cohen's Sri Lankan lawyer. Maurice is American. Mort, the little one, talks like freaking Dobby. They're lemurs. They live in the same insular community. Why do they have all these different accents? They can't get on a plane or a boat. My only conclusion is that the lemurs are voice stealers. Like Ursula, they prey on tourists in Madagascar and steal their voices. And somewhere in the MCU, the Madagascar Cinematic Universe, there is a mute Sri Lankan man going around trying to warn people about this tiny lemur in a headdress who sings modern Latin EDM and steals voices and no one will listen to him. Loki is responsible for Thanos getting the Infinity Gauntlet. Let me explain. In Avengers Infinity War, Eitri the Dwarf tells Thor Asgard was supposed to protect Nidavellir, but why didn't they? With his gift of sight, it was Heimdall's job to watch the Bifrost and alert Odin of any realms that needed assistance. But Heimdall wasn't at his post before the events of Infinity War. Why? At the end of Thor The Dark World, we see Loki usurp the throne of Asgard and displace Odin. And one of the first things he does while impersonating Odin is replace Heimdall with Scourge, who lacks the gift of sight that Heimdall had, meaning he wasn't aware when Nidavellir came under attack, leaving Thanos unopposed to get the Infinity Gauntlet. And that's why... Fair warning, this is not my own theory. But a theory I'm stuck on right now is, is the Sorting Hat a Horcrux? Obviously, if you like Harry Potter, you know what a horcrux is. The Sorting Hat originally belonged to Godric Gryffindor, who was the founder of Gryffindor House. The biggest part of this theory is that each founder of each house put parts of their soul into the Sorting Hat. So you're probably wondering, whom the fuck did they kill to make a horcrux? Keep in mind that Hogwarts was open before the Ministry of Magic was even founded. So obviously, there weren't any rules or regulations yet. In order to make a horcrux, you have to kill but it doesn't really state specifically if you have to kill a human or like a magical being, it just says kill. A big theory is that they killed house elves. This theory definitely makes a lot of sense to me because how can one sorting hat understand the characteristics of each house and determine what student goes where? Also, have you ever seen another magical object that is anywhere human-like as the sorting hat? It's kind of freaky. Now you're probably wondering if they made a horcrux, shouldn't they all be living today? It's a little complicated. 